to be grittier, to compete more. They've dropped one set in five matches since. Pedraza, first touch going to Hannah. And right down emphatically is Trammell to kick things off for the Nittany Lions. Taylor Trammell has been a staple of this offense. She missed most of last season with an injury. She fractured her foot early on in Big Ten play. She's back better than ever leading this Nittany Lions team. Saw her huge smile going back <laughs> to the bench too. No better feeling than just whipping it down for the first point of this game. A shallow serve and Wooker getting a good touch. And kept alive by Minnesota. Looking cross court, and that is touched. Another point to Penn State. That's why you got to continue to play through the whistle. You never know when that ball is down. Even if you think it is, you have to hear a whistle before you stop playing. Great example for everyone who is used to hearing their coaches saying it over and over again, playing through the whistle, as you mentioned. It's Jillian Grimes at the service line. A couple times going to Landfair. It's Groach. Wooker again. Jess Merzik going off the hands, perfectly powering it through. Penn State starting lineup looking like this. We've already seen some action from Merzik and Taylor Trammell. Mac Pedraza coming off a fantastic performance. 32 assists in their 3-0 win against Illinois. Cameron Hanna also scoring so far here for the Nittany Lions. Go to Landfair once more, a frequent target in serve receive. Going over that block is Grove. Awkward adjustment, and Hannah makes the Gophers pay. Even out of system, Penn State has done a phenomenal job finding ways to score in difficult situations. Throwing in roll shots, just getting Minnesota out of system. It's working for the Nittany Lions. Penn State taking a 4-0. After an early timeout, it is 4-0 Penn State over Minnesota. They have four kills on five swings. Minnesota 0 for right now on their four attempts. Penn State finding the floor easily. Minnesota hasn't found their offensive rhythm yet. Go to Landfair once more, and she shanks it. It's 5-0 Penn State. Lots of energy coming from the Nittany Lions side in all facets of their game. Even that bench is getting hyped back there. Now, Coach Cook told us before the game he feels like statistically, tangibly, their serve-receive is improving, but Penn State being aggressive, making it difficult right now. That time, though, in system, and Grove puts it away. That's exactly what happens when Minnesota is in system. The tempo that Melanie Shaftmaster runs to the right side is so quick. It's so difficult as a middle blocker to close it up. Lydia Grove getting the better of them through the seam. And this is going up against a Penn State team, Emily, as you bring up blocks. First in the Big Ten in blocks per set at three, coming off ten in a three-set victory. Going cross court, Merzek, my goodness, a lot of fire behind that. Merzek going almost up and over the block of Minnesota. This is what makes her so great. Even when she has a well-formed block in front of her, she finds ways to score, whether it's going off the block, going over it, or throwing in a nice off speed. She can come up big so many times. Did have eight airs against Illinois just last night. Hit 063, but 10 kills. And a really balanced effort for Penn State. Walker has that sent right back, and look at that block at work. Flex on him, Mac. It's exactly what you want to see from your setter up front. This is what makes Penn State such a great blocking team. It's not just their middles that get involved. The pins set it up so well, they make sure to work hard with their middles to get stuffs. And Coach Schumacher probably challenged Mac Pedraza to say, I want you to be a better defensive player, get more digs, get more blocks. Shaftmaster behind her head from the back row. It is Hansen who is able to put it away. Julia Hansen's in there as a DS in the back row, but what makes her so great in the back row is she's also an offensive option. They'll run her constantly on that set. One of the big recruits from right here in the Twin Cities area. Two kills and their most recent win against Michigan. And that far too long by Wooker, and she's still tinkering with this serve. And McKenna Wooker just started this serve about a week ago in their game against Iowa. 
Blazers. And here's the Minnesota starting lineup. Want to point out Phoebe Awalea, who is second in the Big Ten in blocks per set. And Cook hopes that Jess Merzik sees a whole lot of her right in front. Awalea has been huge for this program, coming in as a transfer and really big defensively. Shaftmaster chasing it down, looking to Landfair, who goes in the back row to perfection. Mac Pedraza came down a little bit weird off of that block. She's shaking it off. Watch her come down. Taylor Landfair, good swing. The number five in blue. That's a setter for Penn State. Heart and soul of their team. Pedraza looking to Markley, and she tools it off the block. Markley coming off an outstanding match, her best of the season, hit 375, 11 kills for her. She's been on a hot streak. It's been exciting to watch Alexa Markley grow in her career. Last season, as the year went on, she got better and better. Picked up right where she left off this fall. But she also showed this fearlessness as a freshman that has carried over, which you need in Big Ten competition. Doesn't matter your grade. Landfair once more, ceiling a little too wide. Oftentimes last season they would bring Markley in when they needed a spark off the bench and every time she provided it for them. I remember back against Wisconsin when Penn State was playing, they put her in and she completely changed the set for them. No pressure there, stepping in against the Badgers as a freshman. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Freshmen will take the biggest swings. On the back row again, it is Hanson and reading it off the block, placed over by Shaftmaster. And Markley crushes it down the line. Mac Pedraza is allowing her hitters to be in one-on-one -on -one situations constantly so far to start this set, allowing them to be up 11 to three. Their defense working so hard in transition to get those pins going with some tempo. Absolute dominance by Penn State right now, hitting 700 to Minnesota's 077. That's what this Penn State offense does. Finding her groove, even though she's played alongside Melanie Shaftmaster for a couple of years now, things are a little bit different. That tempo, that system, a bit different for them to work through. Last season, Minnesota ran one of the fastest offenses in the country. That set going out to Taylor Landfair was lightning quick. It allowed for a lot of seams in the block, but there was also a lot of misconnections. This year, they've slowed down down the outside set to Taylor Landfair. That allows her to go up and over blocks. It just took Landfair and Shaftmaster a little bit of time to get that connection down. Cook says he wants to use the length of Landfair, which is what a slower set can help accomplish. There's Allie Holland at the line for Penn State, who is rolling right now. 11 to three is Hanson. Will send that too far out of bounds. He can Cook will go to that challenge card. Potentially thinking there was a touch on that ball. And he will indeed use it. Maybe anything to stop the bleeding at this point. Yeah, at this point, Minnesota's struggled to get in system. They're taking a lot of out-of-system swings and not handling those balls well. Sometimes in chaotic situations, all you have to do is put the ball on a setter, get the ball over. Minnesota's struggling in that aspect. Minnesota hitting zero right now. Three kills compared to 700 for Penn State. Another look. At this play, currently under review, Minnesota hoping to recoup this point from the swing of Julia Hansen. Question of whether there was a touch on this ball or not. It's a bit difficult to tell with Alexa Markley. It looks like her hair is coming whipping around. It looks like it might have touched <laughs> that, but we're looking for fingertips here. Seeing anything conclusive there. Maybe looks like the ball deflects upwards slightly right right there. I'm just not sure if it's enough to completely overturn. In challenges, you have to have conclusive evidence if you're going to overturn or confirm a call. And if it is upheld, you end up losing that challenge. If it is reversed, you keep that in your pocket. Yeah, you win it, you keep it. You lose it, you lose it. And it still is point to Penn State, so Cook unsuccessful on that challenge. Now Keegan Cook, only one challenge remaining through the next four sets. If they do go to a fifth set, you get an additional challenge with a max of two. So Holland steps back behind the line. Her team absolutely on fire to start. Seven kills, no errors on ten swings.
They go to Wooker. Shaftmaster and then Landfair finds the floor and Minnesota needed that. Smart decision by Melanie Shaftmaster to go with Landfair on that set. It was a perfect pass. Penn State's middle hung out with Minnesota's middle, allowing Landfair to be one-on-one -on -one outside. Overpass, a joust at the net, stays on Minnesota's side. Groke gets it over. And then into the block, Markley doing that so well in this match. Alexa Markley is having her way with the block up front. She's tooled off it a few times now. Minnesota's right side blocker has to get that hand turned back in the court so they can't use it. This Pedraza back to serve. Landfair takes some heat off. Mersic from the back row. And up the middle, Davis hammers it. And Barkley returns the favor right back. One key Katie Schumacher Kali has challenged Mac Pedraza to do this season was get involved defensively. Throughout that rally, two different massive plays allowed Penn State to run in transition. This ball beautifully set by Jillian Grimes. Markley able to put it down. Penn State working so well in transition. Markley three kills. Shaftmaster goes cross court, reaching up is Grove, but it won't fall. That takes down the camera on the attempt from Hannah. Ball it will won't be a point fall, to but the camera will. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota will take it either way. Minnesota having success with that gap go combination. A middle's running right in front with the outside on top of it, and uh, there we go. There's the ceiling of the path. Made me a little uh, nauseous there looking at that <laughs> one. Like I was on a roller coaster ride. Mersic back row. There's Wooker going off speed to perfection. Really smart decision for McKenna Wooker. She's been blasting balls so far to start this set. Penn State's defense on their heels. She sees a massive hole in the middle of the court to go to. Minnesota trying to generate a run, trailing 14 to 6 in front of this homecoming weekend crowd. Quick set and Trammell puts it away. Great route run by Trammell. This ball pushed forward toward the outside. She adjusts her approach and goes with Mac Pedraza on the set. Watch her stay put. That gap turns into a quick. There are a lot of bodies in front of her too to read. Yeah, difficult to read as a blocker. You have no idea who's getting the ball in that situation. And the overpass, Trammell says, I'll take that. Serve and pass, the name of the game. Penn State winning the battle right now. Minnesota at a system at too high of a clip to run their offense. Angelina Stark serving for Penn State. Wooker going over the block. Hannah is a stuffed. Davis and Wooker sending it back. Huge stuff, Erica Davis getting involved on that one. McKenna Wooker setting it up perfectly. Erica Davis gets that left hand right on Wooker's right hand to close it up. Elise McGee off the bench and to serve. Pedraza quickly up the middle again and nothing Shaftmaster could do with that speed. Minnesota continuing to serve Jess Merzik to try to make her think about a little bit more and take her out of the offense. But Jess Merkis is a player, she wants to be served. She wants every ball coming her way. She's confident in herself that she can make a good pass out of it. And that will land well in bounds for an ace. This communication on Minnesota's side, that huddle lasting a little bit longer than normal. This is a rotation that Minnesota can struggle in from time to time with two outsides passing next to each other. Grimes gets it back, goes to Landfair. There's Groats. Then she is stuffed. That block formidable for Penn State. Just Merzik making it look easy up front. Absolutely shutting down Groat. Think about this power move, Emily, to end the game against Illinois, a solo block for the game winner. It was 
was pretty nasty. That's what this Penn State team does. They frustrate the heck out of you if you're an offense going up against them. They will continue to get touches. And they'll rack up a lot of stuffs. Booker gets it over. Merzik off the block. Penn State out of system has done a phenomenal job. Minnesota's doing a good job putting the ball on Mac Pedraza, getting him out of system. The Merzik's cleaning up everything outside. Almost an overpass. Well done by Shaftmaster setting up the kill. Beautiful save by Shaftmaster. She has to turn her back to the net and just get this ball in the perfect spot for Phoebe Awalea to put down. Miss Grote at the line, hoping Minnesota can go on a run. Getting 120 as a team. Great effort by Murr. Pedraza goes right back to Holland, and then finally she puts it away. Allie Holland taking complete control of the net up front. You see the disruption that Kylie Murr can have defensively. She is sitting on these balls, making it so difficult for Penn State to put balls down. They have to hit away from her to get a ball to hit the floor. Allie Holland came into the season after an all Big Ten first team selection last year saying, I can still contribute more offensively. And you saw the way that Mack was feeding her. Awalea up the middle, finds a perfect spot. For a Minnesota team that relies on their pin so heavily, this is so smart for Jack Master to make sure that the middles are a threat early on. That's something that Minnesota has wanted to establish since the beginning of the year. It's been an ongoing process for them. You have some newcomers and people that don't have too much experience playing that position. Not really needed when you got serves like that coming from McKenna Wooker. Yeah, that's just, that's difficult some, to get control of. Some top spin serves can be easy as teams just might put in kind of a roll shot, but Wooker just unloads on these balls. And another time where she sends it too far out of play. Those are the errors that you're okay with. When you have a top spin server, you know they're gonna be a little bit more high errors than a float serve would be, so you're okay with that one-to-one -one ratio. You hear that from coaches frequently, good errors versus bad errors. In a top spin serve, you're gonna have a lot more good errors than normal. Burr keeps it under control. Bump set to land fair and sent back by Penn State. It is Holland and Pedraza making the stop. Penn State serve working so well with their block. The serve is getting Minnesota out of system. That block is set up in the perfect spot to get a stuff on the outside. Staffmaster back to Landfair, and she is going to pick up the points for Minnesota. This set a little bit quicker than what we've seen Shaftmaster set Landfair with. Creating a one-on-one, -on -one. she goes right in the seam. Landfair, three kills, six swings, hitting 167 to start. Penn State inching closer to set point. Floor cleaned up, ready for Murr. Pedraza looking to Markley, and she unloads, but can't keep it in bounds. Alexa Markley is continuing to try to hammer that line shot and go after Melanie Shaftmaster rather than Erica Davis up front, the middle for Minnesota. Burr leaves it short. And Merzik unloading, beautiful dig by Murr. And Pedraza up the middle, whipped down by Holland. It's looking fun for Penn State. Even as Minnesota's defense turns up, if Penn State gets an easy ball like this, that's a good transition. Allie Holland working so hard to get off the net and put it down. It is set point for Penn State. Landfair gets the look and she finds that deep back corner. 
Perry Lampert trying to get Minnesota just a little bit more momentum. This is where they have to have a gut check. They have to try just a little bit harder, work harder every single point, whether it's in transition on some of these swings, play harder, play smarter. Raza teeing up for Markley and a point to Minnesota as that sails too long. Minnesota within 10. The score looking like what they did most recently just last night against Michigan. They were in Penn State spot. The draws up the middle again, and the middle's been unstoppable. Penn State looking dominant, taking set number one. Penn State using every hitter in their arsenal. Such a balanced effort for Penn State. Mac Pedraza is spreading massive kills that we see her do. She was a threat. Front row, back row, they will find her. The draws up the middle, picking up where they left off with Trammell. All out of sorts for Penn State and a free ball for the Gophers. Sent right back by that Penn State block. Throw finding a seam. And that's going out of play. A hard fought point for Penn State to start off set number two. Right out of the gates, Penn State and Minnesota battling defensively. Great up after great up. McKenna Wooker almost has that one, just shanks it a bit too far. Targeting Landfair again with the serve. Placed over by Grope. And off the swing of Merzik, it will be a kill for Penn State. It's hard to control that heat she has. It is so difficult. Even when she's going off speed, she finds ways to score in really tough ways. Out of system, she's doing an incredible job cleaning up a lot of junk and scoring. Staffmaster looking to Grote, and that time she places it. Lydia Grote with a big swing at a much needed time for Minnesota. Melanie Schaffmaster is on the move. It's not the prettiest set, but she sped up her approach, found that seam in the block, and went right through it. I was watching Grote, and every time she came into the game in set number one was bouncy, upbeat, I think trying to keep the morale up on the gopher side. Here's a look from Merzik off the hands, just that easy. Penn State right out of the gates, going back to Jess Merzik. One-on-one -on -one situation. Mac Pedraz is doing a phenomenal job spreading out this offense. Pedraza with 13 assists. And Wooker slicing cross court. Smart shot by McKenna Wooker up front. Identifying this block was way too far out to the pin. That leaves her a massive lane to hit cross court. Minnesota within one. Set number one. They had one point trail 21 to 8. And from out of the gates, it was all Penn State. Urzak getting underneath it. Hannah has to readjust, and that will be a point to Minnesota. Big Ten Plus delivers thousands of non televised live events, access to next day on demand replays, multi view to watch up to four games at once, and a 24 7 channel for your favorite school. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10plus.com. Merzik going to work again. I mean, there are some balls that you can't even dream of digging. And Jess Merzik has like five or six of them a match. When she has a seam in that block, she is not afraid to take a massive rip straight down. Transfer from Michigan after three seasons there. Looking to expand her game even further. Pedraza to Merzik once more. The Minnesota block reads it, then recovers the pancake by Shaftmaster. Merzik over the block. Burr the bump set to Grote. And then it's Merzik terminating an extension. 
extended rally goes to the Nittany Lions. Most of these extended rallies Penn State is coming out on the other side of. It's because they have an outside like Jess Merzik, who's able to just stay in it swing after swing, eventually getting the kill if it doesn't go down on the first one. Going to land fair again, Wooker, but reading it is Grimes an overpass though for Minnesota. Grimes once more keeps it off the floor. And Murr can't do the same point to Penn State. The bench absolutely fired up. How about Jillian Grimes stepping in the sophomore libero for Penn State? It's her first season in that libero jersey. She has impressed so far. Transition doing a phenomenal job. Jess Merzik going right at the defenders. Awalea has that sent back. And there is Awalea with the block. She is formidable at the net. That's the Phoebe Awalea that we've seen all season long. She reaches those hands so far over the net. When she's out to the pins, there is not a player in the country that gets her hands further over and wrapped down. It's the combination of athleticism, the eye work, the hand work, and her consistency whenever she's reaching over, making her so good at blocking. And Minnesota able to pick up another point at the service line. Lydia Grote, one of the best servers on Minnesota's team. She does a great job picking apart the seams of passers. Grote's just a little bit too long. Just Merzik will go back to serve. That's why communication is so important as a serve receive unit. You have to be talking so early whether those balls are in or out. Great communication on Penn State side. Does that start in the front row or is it a specific player? It usually comes from the libero. Normally they're the ones taking charge back there. Something that goes unnoticed in this game most of the time. Booker, the free ball over for Penn State. Off the slide, Holland, but underneath it is Hansen. Draza tries to dump it over. Walker into the block. Minnesota making some flashy plays on defense, making that Mac Pedraza dump look easy. Aulea got a touch on it, converted by Murr. Walker able to go right off the Penn State block to put it away. Minnesota looking locked in, and you think in that last huddle between sets, Penn State had to know that Minnesota would come out fired up. Here's Markley unloading, and Minnesota's block rejects it. Awalea and Shaftmaster making the stop. Big block for Minnesota. More of a miscommunication error on Penn State side. They had three defenders on coverage. Just no one makes a play on that ball. Shaftmaster at six foot three could certainly have an impact in the blocking game. He's a tall physical setter. There's another beautiful ace with that serve from Wooker. Booker's only been using this serve for about a week now, and it looks like she's been using it for years. Her toss is great, and she unloads when that toss is there. First lead of the match for Minnesota. That time she goes into the net, so short-lived, tied up at eight. Taylor Trammell will check back into the game. She's been one of Mac Pedraza's favorite targets so far. She's six of seven, hit an 8.57. Watch for Mac Pedraza to really find her as she checks in. The middle in general has been set 13 times in this game. That's something Pedraza has been really focused on this season, getting middle involvement. Yeah, you have a pin like Jess Mersey, we can put it down, but get your middles involved and you can. Beautiful pancake by the middle, but it's gonna be a point to Minnesota. Smart shot by Taylor Landfair, just going right up and over that block, identifying the right back defender, a little bit too deep on defense. McGee back to serve for Minnesota. Berzik, solid pass, then she goes to attack and gets it over. And a mini miscommunication by the Gophers. That'll be a point to Penn State. Uncharacteristic on Minnesota's side. Lonnie Schaffmaster just trying to shake that one off. Those are the errors that you cannot have on your side. Coaches talk so often about that first contact too, and making that solid that time, just falling to the floor. Go, 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 go. 
into the net, and Lanfair will pick up the kill. Lanfair with back-to-back -back tip kills, just putting it right over those blockers. What makes this tip so difficult to defend is it's going right on the back of the blockers. It's not even behind. It's falling right on top of them, forcing them to try to make a play on it. Showing off the range of last year's Big Ten Player of the Year. Go to Hannah. She will pass, then attack. Road trying to slice it cross court. Landfair that time puts a lot of heat on it. That's what happens when you tip an easy ball to Kylie Murr. She's going to get Melanie Shaftmaster in system. This ball is put outside for Landfair. One on one, she's able to get the kill. Landfair up to seven kills on 14 swings, hitting 357. And that's the kind of consistent efficiency that Minnesota is looking to see now and what she has done in Big Ten play. And Taylor Landfair, as the games have gone on this season, she's gotten better and better, getting more comfortable in the systems that Minnesota's put in place. First eight matches was hitting just 173. The last three, 331. The draw is a beautiful set, but it is denied by the Gophers. The biggest thing coming into the season Taylor Landfair is working on was getting stuff blocks up front. She's done a phenomenal job this season improving her defensive play. Timeout is called by Penn State. Coach Cook, this Minnesota team to five sets. Hey, that Iowa ball. team can be very scary. They got a lot of middle involvement. And they will bomb balls from the end line. Pedraza. Looking to Merzik in the back row. Another dig by Merzik. Then she goes to attack, but too long. Smart play from Pedraza, leaving Jess Merzik one on one. She knew that was going to happen with her getting that dig. Normally, will take those blockers out of the play, gives it right back to her, just going a little long on that swing. And the overpass taken care of by Davis Butts out of bounds. Point to Penn State. Those are the errors that you're not so happy with that ball. It's an easy put down. You don't have to swing that hard and take it one angle. There's no blocker up in front of you. Just put it down middle of the court. The hitting percentage on overpasses, astronomical. Tough one for Minnesota. Draza looking to Hannah. And that's going to be a point to Penn State as she goes off the block. Smart shot from Cameron Hannah up front, identifying the blocker. Their hand not turned back in. She can use them to her advantage. Two kills for Hannah, the two time all ACC transfers. That goes off the tape, favoring Minnesota. That'll send Taylor Landfair back to the service line. Watch her be that back row option for Melanie Schaffmaster. Berzik perfectly placed. Looked like another miscommunication on Minnesota's side. Schaffmaster stepping in, looked like she was going to make the play. Either slipped, thought Taylor Landfair was going to take it. Regardless, a really beautiful roll shot, Jess Merzik going right in between all of them, forcing them to have that miscommunication and talk about it. Merzik by far a match high 12 kills on 20 swings. Here's Booker going right at Pedraza. That's unstoppable. Booker bringing the heat going right at the setter. Such a smart shot. This ball left all the way outside, allowing that lane for her to hit right down the line. This ball pushed all the way out, one on one. She takes a rip. Draws it to Holland, tips it over at the nets, kept alive by Murr. The draws it behind her head, and my goodness, Hannah crushes it. Every free ball Penn State's gotten, they've gone right to their middles or that quick tempo right side set. They've been able to put it down really easily. Minnesota 
leaving that one-on-one, -on -one, but it's difficult when Pedraza is making sets like that. Beautiful, moving forward, setting it back. Cassie Kirshen serving. Throw, done loading off fingers. Minnesota started to find their offensive rhythm here in this game. Set one, it was not there at all. The offense looked not like what we've seen it for the last few matches. Now starting to find that rhythm. Shaftmaster getting her hitters going with tempo. Minnesota did not lead in set one, which they dropped 25-14. They trailed by his, the score of 21 to eight at one point. At that time, giving one up to the Nittany Lions. Merzik, the sixth rotation outside, back to serve. Burr chases it down. Walker gets it over. Great dig by Hansen. And another one by Grimes. And out of reach, it'll be a point to Minnesota. Okay, setter. Melanie Shaftmaster getting big up front. You'd love to see that from one of your leaders. She doesn't get to take a lot of swings at the ball, but overpasses, <laughs> you best bet she's gonna unload. Wooker serving again. You mentioned in the open, a breakout season. Leading this team in kills. Hoping to get more points at the service line too. Minnesota with three aces today. More being worked on before Wooker can get it into play. Just off the tape. Well done, and Pedraza makes something happen. Stunning all around from Jillian Grimes, fending off one of the hardest jump spins in the country. To Mac Pedraza on that perfect set, they expect her to set the middle on it. She sets it right behind. Pedraza had some magical kills behind her head where it seems like there's so few people that can do the creativity that she puts into her game. It helps that Pedraza stands at 6-2. It gives her that option to go up and really be a threat offensively. It's one part of her game that she's developed to be a really strong part of the offense over the last few years. Quinn Menger, new into the match. Kept off the ground by Kirshen. Stopped by Trammell. And Landfair reads it perfectly off the block. Really smart shot from Taylor Landfair, identifying two big blockers in front of her. She doesn't have to take a big swing at it. She can just identify the blocker's hands, swipe it right off. Minnesota leading by three. A strong comeback from set number one where they were strongly outplayed by Penn State. From the back row, it is Merzik. Landfair rips it. When Minnesota's in system, they're still running a quick tempo out to Taylor Landfair. It's those out of system balls that they're putting a little bit more height on. Watch how fast this is coming out of Shaftmaster's hand. Taylor Landfair's already in the air when she's making the set. Kept alive by Penn State. Pedraza up the middle. That's been the bread and butter today to Trammell. Pac Pedraza, such a smart setter. She looks at the defense, takes a look over there before she set this, sets this ball, trying to see where that defense is set up, knowing that Trammell's going to be one on one in that situation. Seven kills, no errors for Trammell on eight swings. That's 875.
Gaffmaster keeps it in. She can play Mac Pedraza's game at 6-3. That's a beautiful shot from Shaftmaster up front. Normally on set or dumps, the defense will crash inside. That allows a lot of openings in the deep corners. And a good veteran setter like Melanie Shaftmaster knows that that corner's open. She's going to throw right back there. She's back at the service line. One of the most experienced setters in the Big Ten in this matchup. It's so exciting to watch two setters that their volleyball IQ is just so high. And that's why we're seeing this game get better and better on, on both sides as teams both adjust the defense in front of them. Off the tape and read by Hannah. Help the middle, Trammell. She's been untouchable. Taylor Trammell cannot be stopped up front, even when Mac Pedraza's five, six, seven feet off the net, still getting that middle going with tempo. Taylor Trammell doing such a fantastic job of going right through the seams, not afraid to take a big rip. Angelina Stark back to serve. So look for Gross and a big block, but it goes off and a point to Minnesota. Penn State there on the block, just not finishing it. Because of how quick Minnesota runs this offense, it's difficult to get your hands up and over in time. See how fast that is? It's difficult for Trammell to get her hands pushed over. Graza up the middle again, and Trammell finds the seam. Incredible start to this match for Trammell. Minnesota has to make some adjustments and know that in perfect pass situations, meaning it's within about five feet of the net, is gonna find Trammell anytime she's up there. Minnesota might wanna throw in a few commit blocks up on her. Nine kills on 10 swings for Trammell. Walker, big overpass. Walker gets another look. And will land out of bounds and a point to Minnesota with some big defensive plays mixed in. Minnesota starting to convert better in transition through these chaotic defensive plays. They're finding ways to keep the ball up, keep the pressure on the Nittany Lions. Timeout is called by earlier tonight. You would have seen Indiana come up just short against Nebraska in four, but back-to-back -back matches. That Nebraska has dropped set number one, but Indiana couldn't close it out. Look, Indiana's a scary team this season. They brought back their entire squad. They serve harder than anyone in the country. They have three top spin servers who unload on the ball, and they got one of the best setters. First serving for Minnesota. Hannah demolishes that ball. Penn State's converting so well at a system. When Pedraza's 10 feet off the net, she's putting her hitters in a great situation. Even with two blockers in front of them, she's leaving them space to attack this ball. Anna back to serve. And that will go too long. A point to Minnesota. Inching closer to set point. A big response from the Gophers. Dropping set number one, scoring only 14 points. Rote getting Penn State out of system. And off the block, well done. Doesn't always have to be the hard kill from Merzik. Sometimes she can go up, identify where that block is, and just an easy swipe right off it. Watch her hand finishing right at those hands. Penn State within three. Very much in play here at set number two. Shaftmaster to Wooker as that sent back. Up the middle, Alalea, the most sensitive touch and finds the floor. Awalea felt like she hung up there for about five minutes, took a look at the defense and put it right where they weren't. <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing you can do when you have the leaps that she does. Walker into the nets, and it's back to a three-point difference with Minnesota at set points. 
Allie Holland, one of the better servers for Penn State's team, along with Taylor Trammell checking back in the game. Expect a lot of balls to go to Trammell in the middle. Holland goes to Murr. Landfair, beautiful dig by Merzik. And then Markley has been so exact off the block. Timeout called by Minnesota, just a two point difference. One of the most visible interconference transfers, and seen several of those in this match, too, as it just becomes more normal with the COVID year. Shaftmaster goes down to get it. Up the middle, Trammell and red in the back row by Wooker. And look at that block by Penn State denying set point again. Minnesota Time timeout called. Minnesota made that adjustment knowing that Taylor Trammell was gonna get set. They commit blocked up, they got a good touch off of it. Weren't able to transition though because Purdue, Maryland, dominant wins against Big Ten teams if you missed any of the action today. Set point number four for Minnesota. But Penn State looking to extend set number two. Fair kept off the floor by Merzik. Landfair getting another touch and she drops it down. Minnesota strikes back. Taylor Landfair coming up huge when the Gophers needed it most. They fend off four different set points, but they were able to get it done. Taylor Landfair putting the team on her back at the end of this set. They can swing after swing, hoping that one ready to compete for their first Big Ten championship since 2017. The draws up, up the middle again. Tool it off the block is Trammell. Incredible. Pedraza is finding her anytime this team is in system. Erica Davis a little bit frustrated with herself, not taking away the shot that Trammell wants to hit, but it's difficult when Trammell is hitting all shots in the book. Landfair gets underneath and sent back by Holland, but that goes out of play. Minnesota with the point. Great tool from Erica Davis up front. Allie Holland in the right spot to make that block. Difficult to get those hands over with as quick as it's set. Landfair nearly into the crowd. She gets into her serve. Berzik, beautiful swing. Minnesota has had trouble defending that middle of the court. Jess Merzik has exploited that all night long, going right into the seams, forcing Minnesota's defense to talk about it. Because then you have someone like Alexa Markley, who's been snapping it down the line so well, too, and off the block. Difficult to defend Penn State because of how rangy all their attackers are. Hershen back to serve. Here's Walker. Great look, and she terminates. Bread and butter shot for McKenna Wooker. When Shaftmaster can push her all the way out to the pin, this is what Wooker is most comfortable hitting. She turns her shoulders back down the line. She takes a big rip on it. Wooker, the sophomore, seven kills, hitting 250. Here's Murr. Off the slide, it is Holland. Great one arm save by Shaftmaster. That sails out of bounds, a point to Penn State. Lydia Grote turning to her libero saying, hey, that was a really good set, that's, that's my bad, I'll take a better swing on that. Penn State with the early one point lead. Allowed just 14 points and set one with Minnesota. Storm back and with a strong finish, sealed up set two. 
free ball for Penn State. And Markley has been doing what she's done all match long, Tulian. Markley finding ways to score using the block most of the time, identifying the hands in front of her, either swiping it off or powering right through it. This is the rotation that Minnesota got stuck in last time. They got to get out of it as quick as possible. It's rotation three. Groats puts it away. Better swing from Groat managing it this time. Another out of system swing, but she was able to get on top of it rather than under it. Why it's six kills? For growth, the transfer from Cal has really solidified herself in this lineup. Minnesota loves when she is at the service line, and Mac Pedraza just puts it down. Pedraza disguising this dump so well. She looks like she's going to set it up until the last possible second, and then flips that left hand over to send it. Do you think she's one of the craftiest setters when it comes to their offense? Maybe not just in the Big Ten, but even larger. Absolutely. She's one of the most offensive focus setters, meaning she's getting herself involved in the play constantly. Not a lot of other setters in the country do that. Murr tries to keep it alive, and it will go far out of play. In fact, could have been played by you, Emily. Tried to play it up. I got a little scared. McKenna's barreling at me. <laughs> Yeah, the table took a little shot here, but it, it withstood. Should have passed it up. What am I doing? I think that was your moment that, that you missed moment. on. I'm sure you won't hear about it from them. Placing it over is Hansen. Up the middle, it is Trammell scoring at will up to 10 kills. Taylor Trammell has done a fantastic Minnesota needing the support it can get in set number three, including from the Gopher wrestling team. Putting on a show themselves here right behind the Gopher bench. Tomorrow, don't miss women's soccer as the fourth-ranked Nittany Lions square off with Michigan State's live coverage begins tomorrow at noon Eastern, presented by TIAA, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Ali Holland wanted a new ball after that delay. Didn't like that one. Now she's ready. Good pass by Landfair and a miscommunication. Beautiful dig by Murph. And then it is Walker who puts away the soft shot. Huge transition play. Kylie Murr coming in with an impressive dig. Gets Melanie Shaftmaster all the way up at the net. Penn State's middle jumps with Awalea, leaving Wooker one on one. Minnesota within three. Wooker <laughs> today with. A pair of aces. And it leads to an overpass, and you'll take that. Service pressure from McKenna Wooker has been outstanding for the last few matches. Now ripping this top spin serve. Such a good toss, and she puts all of her momentum into it, coming at it like a hit. It looks even intimidating from afar how she delivers that serve. Yeah, you know when she gets that good toss, she's gonna rip it. And occasionally going a little too far. It's been hit or miss, but otherwise I think a strong match for her so far, the service yeah, She's still getting used to that on the back line. And with you, when you start to top spin serve, you get a little bit inconsistent with it, but she's putting up aces and still scoring points for her team. Pedraza on the other side. Landfair gets it and finds the floor. That was a beauty. Landfair's had a lot of success with that tip right over the block. Mac Pedraza and the other right back defender playing a little bit deep. Landfair identifies that early on and drops it right behind the back. 
trying to find a way to exploit points against this top blocking team in the Big Ten. Landfair doing it in a strong way. At just a couple of inches out of bounds. Penn State leading by three. Really stark back to serve. Someone who's taken on a passing defensive role. Up the middle, Davis whips it down. Beautiful connection between Shaftmaster and Davis. Shaftmaster, even five, six feet off the net, forces this middle set. Erica Davis does not slow down her approach. She is confident going into that. Both these setters making it look easy when they are pulled off the nets, yet still able to look to the middle. That's what makes both of these setters so great. Their range on some of these middle attacks. Berzik denied by Minnesota. It's Grote and Davis. Beautifully set up, Lydia Grote bringing that block inside. Watch her adjust to the set, stays inside, doesn't go with it. Gets those hands over. We missed on the replay or a little happy dance she did afterwards too. She's been upbeat this entire match and you can see that's the kind of energy she wants to bring for Minnesota. There is Trammell keeping it in. She has been on fire. A new career high, 11 kills for her. Seems that Minnesota's okay with leaving her one-on-one, -on -one, but when you're 11 for 13, hitting 846, I think it's time to make some kind of defensive adjustment. Her an overpass, and Merzik puts it down. Felt like everyone on Minnesota's side knew that uh, when you leave Jess Merzik none on one, she's gonna take a rip, so you gotta put your helmet on and hope for the best. <laughs> Three-point lead for Penn State. I wanted to put my helmet on seeing that go over. Shaftmaster keeps it alive with a second contact. Beautiful set. Growth this time, and that is sent back over. Holland, the denial. Huge stuff from Allie Holland. Lydia Grote telling her team in that huddle, hey, that's a good ball. I'm going to take better care of that. You can't swing right down into Penn State's middles. So you'll get stuffed every time. Fifth in the Big Ten and blocks per set. Dominating force at the net, and she does it once more, but kept up. Bump set to land fair, turned away. Anna tries to put it over. Tight space, Hannah once more, and flying in is Murr. Off the hands is Groat, and they take the long point. How about the defense on both sides of the court? Kylie Murr from Minnesota, nothing falling for the Gophers side. This transition defense working so much harder as this match has gone on to create points for their offense. So many hustle plays happening. Kylie Murr picking up stuff that no one else picks up. It's Lydia Grote who eventually gets the point. And Penn State looks like it is going to challenge this play. So the first one used today by Katie Schumacher Colley, Keegan Cook was unsuccessful and one that he used early on in the first set. So he has one remaining. Penn State challenging a net call throughout this play. Question of whether Minnesota had touched the net at some point during that 90 play long rally. And yeah, that was reminiscent of the one Nebraska had a couple of matches ago. Watching that one, I was out of breath. I wasn't even playing it, son. <laughs> I like hearing from Lexi Rodriguez afterwards. She admitted, you're, you're exhausted after oh, that. Oh, right after the play ended, it felt like everyone on the court just fell down and, and <laughs> part elation that for Nebraska, they got the point, but just for the point to be over. And that's gonna go in favor of Penn State. That long rally. 
ends up going to the Nittany Lions after the challenge by Schumacher Colley. They called Erica Davis in the net at some point during that long rally, meaning she touched the net on this swing. Coming down, her hand clips it. Excellent job by the coaching staff of Penn State. That feels like a big swing, too. Speaking of big swings, that's gross. That rally not as long. When Minnesota's in system, they can get Lydia Groat going outside with a little bit of tempo. When you leave these Minnesota pins one on one, they terminate. Pedraza, what a set. The whistle will give the point to Minnesota. How about that effort from Melanie Schaffmaster making that ball look easy, taking that dive to her right? She's been increasing her digs, a career high for her this year. She expands her game as well. Schaffmaster is one of the best defensive setters in the country. She's constantly putting up 10 plus dig matches. Schaffmaster back to Gross and she unloads. Rhodes had an up and down game. We've seen errors from her. When she gets that good kill, it feels so good because oftentimes it's clean. She's hitting it with so much pace, right? And kills, but that is not a typo, Emily. 846 hitting on 13 swings. Insane numbers from Taylor Trammell. She's a player that's oftentimes known as more of a defensive middle, really that middle blocker role rather than middle hitter. Katie Schumacher Colley was telling us, you know, she flies under the radar sometimes because she's not putting up crazy offensive numbers. That is not the case tonight. She is putting up insane numbers, making sure to be involved in that offense, working really hard in transition to be up and available for Mac Pedraza. Entered this match, 1.59 kills per set in that number gonna go up after this one. Beautiful serve by Taylor Landfair, and that is city applause from Coach Cook. He's seen her entire role grow because of her work at the service lot. Taylor Landfair has been working on every single part of her game this season, especially her serve. She's putting a lot more pace on it, and there's no spin. It's a complete float serve. That's been what Cook is trying to work and develop her into is this all-around complete player who can go to the next level. And he's talked about how much he appreciates that she has trusted him, has been coachable, and her staying with the program with the coaching change. This time off the tape and down red well by Stark, and then Holland hammers it. When Penn State needs a quick side out, they go to Holland and they go to Trammell in the middle. They have hit so efficiently. Mac Pedraza has put them in beautiful situations for them to take a big rip on it. Hershen targeting Landfair. It is Walker powering through the block. Booker been a little bit quiet over the last few sets, but we've seen her take swing after swing, just not as efficient as normal. But she's been using the blocker's hands in front of her, starting to come alive. And shanked uncharacteristically by Grimes. She's earned that libero jersey because of her passing or server. See, that time just going awry off the serve from Murr. Libero picking the libero apart back there. A little battle going on. But Cook also praising Murr at the service line. It's not easy. Pedraza denied by Wooker. And then it is Merzik off the block herself. That was such a high IQ volleyball play. This is a trap set. It's so tight. You know there's two big blocks in front of you. The only thing you can do to score is try to tool it off. Rather than go with the one-handed tip, knowing it might come right back, she goes two hands and swipes it off the block. That gives Penn State a one-point lead. Too long for Merzik. Ties it up. Minnesota keeping pace. Only scored 14 in set number one. Took set two, back and forth here in set three. 
Pedraza looking to Markley, and again, off fingers. Doing it so well today. Alexa Markley, all of her swings are very high, and whether or not they get a touch off that block, she continues to hit that back third of the court. If you're a defender in the back, you almost have to take a step backward because it's not going sharp or inside. Eight kills on 20 swings, 200 hitting from Markley. Good looking pass by Landfair, tipped over by Wooker. And Shaftmaster gets underneath. Trammell, that's her first air today. Well, Taylor Trammell's human. That's fun to figure out, right? Just learned that today. Knock Pedraza having a word with the ref. Penn State huddling up and I think a question of whether this pancake was down or if Melanie Shaftmaster really did get her whole hand under it. You can see just a little bit long, missing by a couple inches there by Trammell, now bringing her hitting percentage down to 714. I believe the ref's telling her, because they didn't challenge the ball. Mac is was just having a word with them. I think the ref's telling her, you have to challenge it if, if you want us to talk about it. First ball goes up, Shaftmaster tries to get that hand under. From there it looks clean. And Penn State will challenge it. Out comes the green card for head coach Katie Schumacher calling. The second one she's used in this set was successful on her first after that long rally that originally went Minnesota's way. They took back the point. And she wants a closer look. Another play where we saw a lot of great defensive plays, including there by Shaftmaster. We were talking about how much she's focusing on her defense. Or could it be if this was in or out? Ball looking close. Well, it will be reversed. The ball was actually in, so it was on that trammel. Kill and so, wipe the slate clean. She's back to 12 kills, no airs. So remember when I said when she was human? No longer human anymore. <laughs> she's back to being a robot. Still adding it to her career high. Just gotta say it over again. 12 kills, zero airs, 14 swings. Unreal. And a great swing there by Hanson. Minnesota needed that side out badly as quick as possible. That one-point swing could have been a three-point swing easily if Penn State got that. All of a sudden, the Nittany Lions get momentum. Huge stop for Minnesota. That's how critical challenges are, and I'm sure these coaches have analytics about when they're going to be using it, the timing, the kind of plays, and Schumacher Colley has been outstanding today, going two for two. That's a point to Penn State with a whole lot of power. Cassie Kirshen handling that pass so well. A lot of heat coming from McKenna Wooker, but the DS absolutely nails it. That'll send Pedraza back to the service line. Up the middle, Awalea getting in on the action. Awalea so athletic when she's in the air. The set isn't exactly where she wants it, but it's in the window where she can hit it. She adjusts her arm swing and is able to still get on top of it and find a way to score. I mean, she has no airs either. Four for five today, hitting 800. As Minnesota looks to establish its own middle attack as well. McGee there into the net. And Penn State will lead by two as it starts to get late here in set three. As sets get later and later, errors become so important because you can find yourself down really easily if you start to string together a few. When you're in the red zone in these sets within about five or six points, you have to play as clean as possible. Jaffmaster goes behind her head to Hanson. And Merzik, whoa. Merzik trying to take a piece of the ball there. Timeout taken by Minnesota after Merzik just drills it. 
In this situation, Erica Davis stays with Taylor Trammell, allowing the one-on-one -on -one for Merzik. She still goes after Melanie Shaftmaster and scores. Merzik, 17 kills, hitting 448. Penn State is a team hitting 500 in this set. As we look at the rankings right now, and Wisconsin and Nebraska really have a chokehold on that number one and number two. Minnesota Penn State threatening right behind. Ohio State sticking around because of that incredibly difficult schedule as they look to put some wins and some sets together. And then Purdue just last night almost defeating Nebraska, handing the Huskers their first loss of the season, but they end up going down in five. And of course, we say it all the time, Emily, incredibly dominant, difficult in this conference, but it's hard to overlook Wisconsin and Nebraska right there, one and two. Wisconsin and Nebraska feel like they're just a little bit ahead of all the other teams in the pack, and those teams are working to chase them. As the season in conference play gets down further down the line, we'll see some of these bigger matchups play out. It'll be interesting to see what happens when a team like Minnesota or Penn State is facing a Nebraska or Wisconsin, and can they really compete with them? But looking at those numbers, 16 ranked in the top 25, that's a consistent for Big Ten Volleyball. That's why these coaches schedule so tough because they know the Big Ten's a gauntlet. Talked about Jess Merzik, 17 kills. Goes along with 10 digs as well. Incredibly efficient as well. Keeps racking up some airs yesterday against Illinois, but it has been marvelous this evening. Draws a looking to Merzik and underneath it, Hansen. Rhymes to Merzik. His land fair unloading once more. Taylor Landfair trying to get some juice for her team, swinging just with a little bit more extra sauce on that one. Shaftmaster leaving it all the way out. This ball pushed. Landfair has a wide open lane down the line. Landfair 12 kills, and Emily, we've seen her exquisite range today, too, to keep her team in competition. Service air and Penn State opening up a three point lead up to 21 points. Minnesota's 10th miss serve so far this match. As sets get later and later, gotta play cleaner and cleaner. And you wonder if you ever change that approach because that's stacking up on them right now. Penn State, though, gives the point right back. This is one of Minnesota's stronger rotations in a three-hitter rotation up front, along with Taylor Landfair in the back. Shaftmaster has a lot of options. Send right back off the block. It will be a point to Penn State. Minnesota not able to finish the job. Penn State siding out very quickly, nailing the pass, getting Allie Holland going. Holland, her fourth kill. Shaftmaster to Walker, slicing it through the defense. Minnesota running a lot of overloads, having success, bringing the middle and the outside in on near the same zone makes it so difficult to decide who to go up with as an opposing blocker. Pedraza with the dump in. McKenna Wooker identified that early on, went up to go make the stuff. Pedraza just bringing a little more power. Sometimes that's just what it comes down to when it's one on one over the net. Yeah. A lot of times setters are putting everything they have in that ball. Shanked by Wooker that time. A successful ace by Merzik. This is a rotation Minnesota has had trouble with. Row three when Landfair and Wooker are right next to each other. Penn State taking advantage. And it is set point for Penn State. Wooker skying and firing. 
Grove getting the swing that sails out of bounds, and Penn State will take a two to one. That he said this was a stubborn matchup, depending on how Minnesota wants to run its office offense versus the block of Penn State. But so far, the Nittany Lions with the upper hand. As that is just tapped right back down by Awalea, and Minnesota strikes first. Minnesota right away taking charge of the net up front. Awalea going up strong to put it down. Lanfair serving to Stark. Up the middle, Trammell. And Walker so strong off the block. McKenna Wooker powering through that block. Beautiful shot set by Shaftmaster, getting it all the way out. McKenna Wooker trying to put the team on her back as she's done a few times so far this season. 11 kills for Wooker, the sophomore. Not too long for Lanfair, and then we'll put Penn State on the board and within one. It's 11 service errors for Minnesota. A few too many. Penn State's a good passing team, but at the end of the day, yes, you're focused on getting them out of system. Those balls have to be in the court. Penn State allows the fewest aces in the Big Ten. Their serve receive is fantastic. Or the bump set for Groats, and it's Pedraza with the dick. Groat gets another look. Hannah tapping and kept alive by the Gophers. Merzik bringing all the heat, the second contact not there in Penn State, taking another long rally. Veteran leadership showing up for Penn State. It's Merzik and Pedraza. Merzik calling an audible on that ball. She's brought inside to take it on the first contact, stays inside and hits a rip. The two of them had to balance coming in as veterans, how to use their voice, not stepping on toes, but you're seeing it on the court at work now. Beautiful digs. Penn State's defense outstanding. Up the middle, Abelea, and there's Hannah continuing the defense. Draws a looking to Hannah, and it is Wooker who sends it back. Wooker had had enough of that point. Penn State's defense so frustrating. Nothing falls on their side. Minnesota now matching them in that defensive intensity as rallies extend. And for the first time, the freshman, Calissa Minity. The middle sticking with the coaching change as well. Keegan Cook likes to get Calissa Amenity in almost every game. She provides a spark off that bench. She knows she'll be, he knows she'll be ready at all times. Says she's undersized, doesn't play that way. They need that at the net. And that will go to Minnesota with that point. Kind of ugly coming out of those hands. Just a little bit wonky, but Jess Merzik takes a big rip on that ball. You know she'll get it back again. Gave me a little wink after that one. She's like, yeah, you saw what I just did. <laughs> Overpass, and there is Stark. Looks like the net was touched and giving the point to Minnesota. Now this is where Penn State has to play just a little bit cleaner. They're staying in rallies, but they have to convert some of these big defensive plays. They have been flying all over the court today, though. Yeah, Jillian Grimes has stepped up massively for this Penn State team already. 15 digs so far. She's been huge to keep them in these rallies. Nice pass by Merzak, and even better block by Minnesota. Minity and Grote turning it back. Minnesota making great defensive adjustments. When Penn State's in system, they are committing all over those middle. Matchup in Minneapolis, and both of these teams, one lead change the entire match. It really is who is the strongest in the beginning. Seems to hold on. Yeah, one team has gone on a little bit of a run in the beginning. The other team hasn't found out a way to gain some momentum on their side, and not catch up. And it hasn't necessarily been a 
two flip flops, but one team really taking charge both sets. Feels like it's been a back and forth battle, but not in that way. With the exception of the first set, it certainly has. Pedraza behind her head and unleashing the heat is Hannah. Cameron Hannah wanted to side out as quickly as possible. Penn State getting this ball in system. Hannah has a seam to rip through and she does it. Hershen going to Landfair. And Grote pulling it off the block. As good of a blocking team that Penn State is, Minnesota is having a lot of success tonight tooling off of the blockers' hands. Penn State not as disciplined as we normally see them. Enter this match first in the Big Ten in blocks per set. Urzik has to readjust and it works anyway. There are not a lot of players that can get a kill off of that ball. It's out of system. The ball's coming over Jess Merzik's head. She can't see the defense in front of her, nor the block in front of her, but she knows with her high volleyball IQ where they're set up and where to place this ball. Just a special talent. She's, it's her all-around skill set. It's not just one area of her game that she's so good at. It's really everything from an offensive standpoint, back on the service line and defensively, just elite. This week's Big Ten Player of the Week. The first to have more than one season than Healy Washington. That turned back by Penn State and will be a point for the Nittany Lions. Jess Merzik just as disruptive from the back line as she can be up front. This is a player that I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the season to win that Big Ten Player of the Year award with how she started this season and continuing that momentum on into Big Ten play. And Murr can't handle it. And another point to Penn State. Merzik can get points for this team in so many ways. She's targeting those passers back there. Again, a rotation where Landfair and Wooker right next to each other. Merzik's picking them apart. Kylie Murr passing over half the court. This has been a Penn State team that has struggled with aces themselves last in the Big Ten, but they've made it a challenge for Minnesota. Shaftmaster and a dig by Merzik. Off the slide, it is Holland, and the Nittany Lions have worked themselves back into this set. It's tied at seven. This is when momentum becomes so important in these sets. If you're Minnesota on their side, you've got to side out as soon as possible because when Penn State gets on a run, they can really go off. Penn State making Minnesota uncomfortable. Shaftmaster tries the dump in and Grimes read it. And into the net will be a point for Minnesota. Big break for Minnesota on that ball. Penn State called in the net. Sometimes you can feel, sense that sigh of relief when you do get that side out within this whole building. Booker a couple of aces today and a couple of serves going too long like that. Booker's new to this top spin serve, only doing it for the last week or so, so she's still getting comfortable with the timing and consistency. As this season goes longer and longer, expect those errors to sure up just a little bit. 12 though for Minnesota in this match, and that's, that's a chunk of points. Landfair off the block. To put those 12 serving errors in this, into perspective, this offense has only had 12 hitting errors, and you know, a lot more swings. They've already had 122 on the night, 123 now, to how many serves. This team's gotta clean it up from the back line. Lace McGee at the service line. Minnesota back up by one, needing to win this fourth set to extend this match and take it to set number five here at home. Minnesota's won seven straight Big Ten home matches going back to last year. Erzik back row blasts and kept up by Landfair.
Barkley's going to get another go. And that works. Minnesota can't get the other contact. Earlier in that point, miscommunication on Minnesota's side. That is one pillar that Keegan Cook has said is a focus for this team headed into Big Ten play. It was communication, serve and pass, and converting in transition. We've seen a few miscommunications on the Gopher side. You wouldn't expect that considering Minnesota's been in this situation. Seven of their first 10 matches were against the top 15. They face teams that are going to put pressure on them every single point. But we have seen those miscues tonight. Minnesota out of system, but it doesn't matter when you're Taylor Landfair. Oh, beautiful swing from Taylor Landfair. Kylie Murr sending up a nice ball for Landfair to hit. It's coming from over her head. She can't see the defense. She takes a blind swing at it and rips it cross court. Staff master serving for Minnesota. Back row, it's Merzik. But saved by Markley. An excellent dig by Murr. And Landfair terminates with the 40. Defense starting to pick up. Kylie Murr getting things going for the Gophers. Able to find Taylor Landfair on that outside to put it away, but it's the defense for the Gophers that's really picked up as this game has gone on. We know Murr is a spark, we know she's vocal, but we're seeing how her play is also igniting Minnesota. Taylor Trammell keeping it up, already a career high. Make it 13 kills with the soft shot there. It's going right up and over that block. Minnesota's had trouble all night long defending in the middle of the court as there's been a few miscommunications. That ball Melanie Shaftmaster got to kind of overrode the pancake a bit. We're even so far beyond jinxing it. Still zero airs for Trammell on our 16 swings. Still not human. That also not human-like is the block Trammell in on alongside Hannah. Hannah getting those hands so far over the net, just absolutely shutting it down, knowing that middle is going to be late, reaches her hands back in. For a massive stuff. Oh, that was all Hannah right there. Dumped in by Shaftmaster. She looks for her offense as well. Shaftmaster's a player that she'll take it over on two pretty often when she's two or three feet off the net. Such a smart time to do it. Minnesota back on top. Anna over the block and Wooker sticks with it. Then she gets a swing. And it works for Minnesota. McKenna Wooker trying to put the team on her back, taking swing after swing. Might not go down in the first one. She's continuing to bring the heat. Leading this team in attempts with 38, hitting 289 for the Gophers. Great pass by Stark, and finishing it off is Trammell in a hurry. It's just, it's unbelievable at this point what Taylor Trammell is doing. She looks like she's such in a rhythm. Nak Pedraza, the connection looking so good. Even if that ball's not perfect, Trammell's adjusting to it so well to find a way to score. Eight 24, she's hitting, and give another point to Penn State with the ace. That's their fifth. This is what it's going to take from both teams. Now we're starting to trade points. We're seeing more lead changes happen. The question becomes which team could go on a run for longer and which team can make less errors down the stretch. Staffmaster to Walker and met by a brick wall. Allie Holland putting up the X because nothing's getting past that. This ball absolutely housed. Cameron Hanna coming up big again. And an error on the attack by Awalea will give the point to Penn State. And you can feel the energy they're gathering right now, and so does Keegan Cook calling a timeout. 15 to 13 is this freshman-led team. 
This Nebraska team is special, and they're going to put up a really deep run if I had to anticipate in December. Off the air, a point to Minnesota brings them within one. Minnesota needing to win this fourth set to go to five. It's homecoming weekend here on the campus of the University of Minnesota, a packed pav sticking with this team despite their only set struggles, just scoring 14 in set one. Raza to Merzik. Incredibly difficult. Minnesota with it. And the air by Walker gives the point to Penn State. Errors were the difference in that third set. Minnesota made too many down the stretch. Now a few too many errors so far in the middle of this fourth set. Minnesota has to play as clean as possible if they want to get back in this game. And remember, it was Minnesota that jumped out to a 7-3 lead in this set, too. Add another ace for this Penn State team. That is six. They were last in the Big Ten entering this match and service aces per set, but they have been wreaking havoc against Minnesota. Rhodes, and right there is Kirshen trying to get out of the way. And the whistle will give the points to Minnesota. That ball coming off just a little bit wonky out of Angelina Stark's hands. Normally refs a little bit more lax on those calls lately. Even a few tonight that have come out with a little bit of spin, they've let go. Normally when it stays on your side, refs will let that go at a higher clip. That one just a little too much spin on it. Groats at the service line. Exactly who Minnesota wants to be in that spot. The floor cleaned up. One more spot to go is Cassie Kirschen. Who's going to do it herself? But it is with Grode at the line that Minnesota feels like they can extend these runs. The overpass. And it is Walker finding the spot. McKenna Walker bailing Minnesota out of some tough situations. Another overpass not taken care of on Minnesota's side. That needs to be an easy point for this team. Luckily, you have McKenna Walker to bail you out. Walker up to 13 kills right alongside Landfair's 15 to carry this offense. Off the tape. Another difficult serve, but Mersek <laughs> says that doesn't even matter because the ball's in my hands. Mac Pedraza coming in, basically setting this ball sideways off of her knees. Jess Mersek tracks it, hangs up there for about five hours and snaps down in front of the 10-foot line. Check out this set from Pedraza, beautiful. Jess Mersek just unloads on it right at the tee. 20 kills for Mersek. Her fourth such match this season. But her connection with Mac just on another level from playing together at a young age. They think the same, always on the same page. Another kill for Penn State in Holland. Got some swagger. Penn State having all the momentum right now. Through this entire match, they've looked calm, cool, and collected. On Minnesota's side, we've seen them frantic at times in chaotic situations. They have a difficult time calming the chaos, where for Penn State, they've looked calm throughout. A few things on their side and really tweaked some things as they head deeper into Big Ten play and are playing more ranked opponents. And you bring up a great point, Emily, about the night-in, night-out nature of the Big Ten. You look at Rutgers already equaling last year's win total. And even Maryland said Keegan Cook is pretty intrigued by them. Points going to Minnesota, an excellent play, bringing them within two. Huge answer right out of the gates for Minnesota, nailing the pass, getting things going offensively. Watch for Melanie Schaffmaster now in the front court. She'll be an offensive option. And State's looking for their second ranked win of the season. The only one coming against number 22, Western Kentucky earlier this season. That sails out in a point to Penn State. They're up by three and up to 20. Penn State getting a little lucky on that ball. Cassie Kirshen tried to make a play on it. 
Kind of a swing and a miss, but got lucky. Hey, it doesn't matter. As long as, as you stay away from it. A point's a point's a point. Holland serving for Penn State. And Shaftmaster eyes in the back of her head for that dumping. Anytime Shaftmaster's front court, you have to watch out for her to be that offensive option. When the pass is tight, try to put up a blocker. She just must have scouted beforehand, knowing exactly where that wide open space was going to be. Up the middle, Trammell getting Minnesota out of system. Over the block, beautiful by Trammell. And 15 kills, still no airs. Trammell getting it done in so many different ways. She had a few balls where she's unloading back to zone five, but she's tipped a lot right over that block. If you're an off blocker or a wing defender, you gotta play that ball up, it can't drop anymore. She has been in a zone and certainly has Pedraza to thank, but she has put it away time and time again. Rhymes looking for Merzik in the back row. Just a couple inches she misses and a point to the Gophers. That's a big swing of points. Minnesota now down just two, where that could have been a four point swing. Shaftmaster at the service line for Minnesota. The overpass and read by Merzik. The block denying Hannah and a point to the Gophers. That block so well set up by Lydia Grote, allowing Phoebe Awalea, the better blocker in this situation, to get involved. She set it inside. That middle's taking up a lot of space. Awalea so fired up after that play. Back at the Power Five level after competing at LMU last year, started her career at Georgia. Wanted to play in the Big Ten. Point to Minnesota. Taylor Trammell's arms go up. Legal attack on that ball, and all of a sudden, Minnesota finds himself tied in this ball game. Minnesota trying to extend this match in four set number five. Penn State wanted to close the door and pick up their second ranked win of the season. They have not dropped a match since they were swept by number two Louisville earlier this month. And that was when their head coach, Katie Schumacher Colley, challenged this team, said we have to be grittier, we have to compete harder. They have dropped just one set since then coming into this match and wanting to keep it at just two overall since that loss. Star kept off, but it will be a point to Minnesota there ahead. Minnesota coming out of the timeout, staying dominant. Melanie Shaftmaster putting in really tough serve, causing Penn State to give another look at this ball to put Alexa Markley back in. Second lead change of this set. Shaftmaster into the net, and that is 14 service errors today. Minnesota struggled with errors down the stretch in this game. We saw it play out in the third set. Got to play clean from here on out. That's what plagued them when they dropped set number three as well. Rhodes right into the block successfully. Minnesota all of a sudden two away, relying on their pins to get it done. Lydia Groat with a big swing at a big time. That's exactly what Keegan Cook wants to see from his players to step up. Three Gophers, double digit kills. Groat joining them. Pedraza up the middle. They go to Trammell. 
what else can you say about her match today? 16 kills obliterating her previous career high on 20 swings. Trammell carrying this Penn State team that often needs other people to step up other than Jess Merzik to get it done. She's been that tonight. She's been a force. And Penn State, a huge pickup. And it is 24-23. Shaftmaster goes to Wooker, and a huge point. Minnesota stepping up when it matters. McKenna Wooker taking swing after swing. This is a strong rotation for Minnesota right now with Wooker up front. Looking fearless is the sophomore Wooker. Have to win by two. Up the middle, Holland goes on the inside of the net and Minnesota takes a one point lead. A rare error from Penn State down the stretch. Normally they're clean at this point in the game. They gotta focus on this pass and try to side out quickly. Now it's Minnesota with set point needing to win this set to force a fifth. Raza goes to Merzik, her go-to. We're tied up at 25. As we get later and later in sets, expect both setters to go to their go-to hitters. For Penn State, that is Jess Merzik, the player that just hit the ball. She's gonna get a lot of sets during this time. For Minnesota, Taylor Landfair gonna get a lot of sets, as well as McKenna Wooker, who's in the front row right now. Back to Wong. An air by Penn State, and Minnesota leads by one and has set point again. Jess Merzik knows she's getting this ball off of any pass. Pedraza chasing it down. Merzik making it difficult. Wooker has it sent back. One more look and the block by Penn State. The Nittany Lions relying on what they do best. That is defense up at the net. Allie Holland shutting it down, getting all the way outside in a beautiful stuff. Not the first time, but they get it on try number two. Clutch blocking by this number one blocking team in the Big Ten. Burr, the overpass and put down by Holland. Jess Merzik and Allie Holland putting the team on their back. Jess Merzik allowing that overpass to happen. Holland just takes care of it. Match point for Penn State. 